plan to do tutorial on how to make a uh, desktop background easily using Photoshop. Um, just follow my steps and you should be able to make a pretty good desktop background in a matter of minutes. Uh, the first thing you need to do is hit your print screen shortcut key on your keyboard. Then open up Photoshop, hit File New, and it will already come up with the width and height because um, you've already print screened that. Click OK. Now, depending on what kind of background you want, uh, for example, a space theme, which I normally go for because uh, it comes up pretty good quality but from the from the uh, back background. So, I'll I'll show you a demonstration of uh, this this um, theme. Okay, so click the white color, hit that for the background, and it's always a good idea to start from the back first so obviously the stars and um, so you want to go to brushes uh, the, this arrow here and then choose which one it is it's already on it so I'm just already gonna go through them uh, just pick this one for now and you want the PX size to be around about 1300 Select what colour you want. Now normally people would think uh, stars are white, but obviously you don't have to have white, you have whatever colour you want. I find that um, a bluish colour looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go for an orange blue. And then I've got quite a few brushes on here, but I'm, I'm going to go for um, an abstract sort of cut, uh, sort of design. So I have Change that and you're gonna just click on one. Make sure this is about 950, I would recommend that so actually fits on the page. Uh, choose your colour, uh, we'll choose a sort of light green, and then oh, wait, sorry, let me just come back. So make sure that each layer is new to everything you add. So just hit this this button here, which is the new button, hit the uh, new layout icon, and click then, and then you can go onto this arrow here. Click the middle so it's not going to move anything else, and move it to your liking. Now it's always a good idea to start from like the corner um, of well, what, whichever corner really. Uh, it gives it a, a much better view. Uh, I find normally the top left or bottom left um, I normally go for, but it's up to you what, what you want to choose. Um, okay, so we leave the normal for now. Just actually, no, I think we'll turn it on its side. Uh, I'll show you why. If you turn it on your side, you hit enter. Click middle so you can move it. And if you move it to so this the the left hand side where it starts is in the bottom left hand side of your screen. Hit enter. And then if you hold down control, you can move this up, giving it a pretty cool 3D effect of it flying out or flying into the bottom left hand side of the page. And just hit enter and the and then Pretty cool effect. Um, it's always a good idea to use bright colours, I and mean, then obviously it's to your liking, so everyone has a different uh, view on it if it better or not. Um, and it's always a good idea to use the same uh, brushes in the same pack, uh, that way, giving it a, a much more overall better effect. Use new layer again, make sure this is round about. Same size as last time. Yeah, it's 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 and then enter again. Obviously, it's on a new layer, so you can hit the window again to make sure you're not moving anything out. And you want it to the corner again. I mean, you can, you can put it on its side and then put it in the middle and do all that again, but I'm just going to turn it for now. I'm not going to fool about with it. Uh, 
for sure it's starting in there. Bottom of them. Now, the reason for putting it on a new layer, not just because you want to move it about and stuff, but not move anything else. Um, basically, if there's stuff on there that you don't want, like a, a flip or something like that, you use the eraser tool and just erase it away and um, choose what you're liking. If you're not aware of the quick um, undo um, uh, keyboard shortcut, then it's Control Z, which just takes away the previous um, thing you've just done and change it back to normal, so it's just undo basically. Um, now normally with the same thing, you don't want something that is going to be completely random. For example, a concrete dust sort of look like a rustic effect. Because it just ruins it, as you can see, it just completely mucks it up. Even if you, even if you make it smaller and then do a different colour, it just doesn't look right at all. So. Uh, a good idea to keep the same sort of uh, abstract look. And um, there's loads of different abstract brushes you can find um, with my other tutorials on how to download them and install them, as well as fonts. And um, I think if we go for abstract set one, there should be yeah, there's, there's a couple here that's quite similar. They're, they're not as big, but gives you more individual individuality of where you want it on the page. Um, I'll choose sort of red. I haven't got red yet. Bright red. Remembering as bright. Oh, oh sorry, I haven't added a new layer again. Should be equal to that. Turn it. And then around about there. Now you can change your opacity uh, using this tool, which, as you can see, it kind of like fades into the background. Which you don't want really. I, I just want everything in order. Uh, so make sure your opacity is on 100 uh, for the best quality. Now, if you want the red behind the blue and the blue behind the green and so on, you can just move the layers like that and they'll move behind each one. But I'll leave it as it was for now. So layer 1, layer, layer 2. There we go. Um, so as you can see, it's already looking pretty good, cool. Um, this is just one of the many few things, uh, many thousands of different. One last thing before I forget, which is probably quite important. And um, once you've finished with your background, you just want to go to File, Save, and now you have the option of saving it through all of these different um, different types. Now, if you don't know what the hell any of them mean, the the one that you want to save it as is JPEG, which is the most common saved uh, image file, and I'll just name it abstract one for now. Um, just saving it as a PSD means that um, as a PSD folder, as a Photoshop uh, file, and you can go back onto it and edit the layers still, and uh, it will all be saved on there. But I don't, I, I don't muck around with all of that, so I'll just save it as JPEG. Click save, and you want to. Save it as the largest file possible, make sure that's the maximum, and click OK. Leave the baseline as standard. Close that, and it wants me to ask if I want to save it as a PSD again. Just click No. Open up where you've saved it. I think I named it Abstract 1. And there it is, and using Vista, you just double click on the image, right click, set the desktop background. Close that, close that, and there we have it. Hope the tutorial has helped. Uh, uh, yeah, again, I um, hope seeing feedback or anything you recommend that I've done wrong in the video. Uh, that's about it, and I hope I've helped.